a strange figure towers over the bar. A huge, ungainly man with skin so milky white that his blue veins are visible even from a distance. His bald head is equal parts lumpy and pitted, and blood-filled eyes stare him passively out at you from beneath his pale brows. The glass in the albino's large, clumsy hands looks dangerously delicate, as if one twitch of those cloused fingers would be enough to crush it. A gold medallion engraved with a tankard gleams around his neck. What'll it be? Who are you? Ah, okay, nothing is voiced here, so I need to read all of this. The albino slowly takes your measure with his red eyes, and finally, with a gentle sigh, hmm, says, Gemiel Hawks, vampire. Are you really a vampire? What kind of question is that? Come on, that's a stupid question. You, you don't do that to people. If, if someone is honest to you and says, I'm that. Are you really? Oh, goodness. How old are you? Five? Okay. Uh, are you really a vampire? Camille gives you a long look of reproach and then grudgingly answers, No. What? How did you end up in the Crusader City? How did anyone end up here? How did you or, or them? With a huge hand, the tavern keeper gestures at the ragtag group assembled in the room. The world is big, but still there isn't a place for everyone. People who no longer have a life anywhere else, they end up here. Law or religion? Check past, huh? The medallion you're wearing, that's a sacred symbol, isn't it? Are you a cleric of Caden Kalian? I am a tavern keeper, best in the city, the best there's ever been, and I pray to the best god there is. Any news in the city? The albino, albino looks around. There are demons everywhere, and you showed up. <laughs> Are there any places in the city worth visiting? If you mean places that normal people usually stay away from, well away from, then there are plenty. Like the Pitaxian wine cellar. Camille pauses for effect. Like the name of the place should, <gasps> should make you quiver in fear. Pitax. 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 Whatever city. Pytex's origins lie with brigands from their neighbor to the north, Brevoy, who sought sanctuary amid the forests of the River Kingdoms. A band of vicious thieves made a hideout in a riverside hamlet known as Pytex. As they visited there year after year, the ill-gotten gold slowly transformed Pytex into something considerably larger than a simple sleepy fishing village. Eventually, the bandits settled in Pitax permanently, building walls around the village, hiring cell swords to help defend against their enemies, and crowning themselves kings of a newfound realm. This Pitax became a permanent fixture of the River Kingdoms, able to survive and thrive for nearly four centuries, while others around it withered and decayed. It once belonged to a Pitaxian trading house. Then King Iroveti came to power in Pitax, and property started changing hands. Soon after, the seller's shop assistant was found in a ditch. Not all of him, mind, just his head. Numerian gangsters has had taken possession of the place. Numeria. Once a rising power poised to unite its neighbors under its banner, today Numeria has fallen into decay. Here, savagery and signs exist side by side. Amid the wreckage of a crashed starship from a distant what starship? From a distant world, techno technomancers from across Golarion flock to research and exploit the technological wonders found within the otherworldly ruins. 
Oh, starship. Meanwhile, tribes of primitive barbarians cling to age-old tradition and issue technology in favor of their own raw skill and martial prowess. This is a nation where, under the auspices of a technological advancement and the betterment of civilization, a select few rule a subjugated nation as despots, despots and tyrants, placing their own power and continued reign above the well-being of their citizens. Okay. They wanted to sell something stronger than wine on the street, and they ended up on the gallows. Then, King Ayrovetti's number was up, so now the store stands empty and unclaimed. People say that a headless ghost wanders the place at night, moaning ghoulishly. <gasps> oh. After coming to the end of the story, unusually long by his standards, the tavern keeper takes a swig from his tankard. Just don't ask me how he makes any noise with no head. I wasn't there, I just tell it like I heard it. I see you're not one for talking. Wait, wait, we just talked, right? that's a useless sentence. Gemmel gives you a long, mournful look and says nothing. Well, friend Gemmel, please show me what you got. Alright, hey, okay, we're going to buy all potions, most definitely. Rest I don't care. Aid. Moral burn, I don't care. But, uh, invisibility. Trinity ball stealth shape, I don't care. Moderate wounds, I want all the potions. All the potions. Gloves of the Neophyte. When the wearer of these gloves casts a cantrip or a first level spell, that spell deals additional damage per die rolled. Perfect. Dark Veil. Once per day, you may use this item to grant your party total concealment against range attack. What? Dark Omen. If the wearer of this ring has the ability to cast spells spontaneously, grants them the ability to cast the following spells. Ray of Enfeeblement, Scare, Ray of Exhaustion, Fear and Wave of Fatigue. To cast a spell, the wearer still needs to have a spell slot of the required level. Okay. Bag of Holding. The bag of holding opens into a non-dimensional space. Its inside is way larger than its outside dimension. Regardless of what is put into the bag, its weight doesn't change. This allows party to carry an additional 100 pounds of weight without suffering any negative consequence. Oh, perfect. Bless web, I don't care. Blah, blah, blah. Spicy pastry. Oh, a comprehensive guide to cooking a tasty dish. Yes, please. What is holy water? You can throw a flask of holy water as a splash weapon. Oh, against demons and stuff. Sure. Purifying solution. Food crop. Yes. Apprentice lockpick. Yes. First aid kits. And deal. Now we're going to sell a couple things we don't need. No, no, no. I just want to sell one. One. Three flails, just to lose a bit of weight. We definitely carry too much. Merchant would pay well for it. No, no, not that one. Two light crossbows. One of the daggers. Five of the glaives. Nine daggers. Yeah, we definitely have too much stuff. Six leather armor. Okay, two heavy crossbows. I definitely like the game since it, if the enemy has a weapon, of course you're going to loot it if you want. It's just realistic. Why would you not take a weapon from an enemy? Long spear, breastplate. There's an axe. Three scimitars, one composite longbow. I think there's a lot of stuff that we have. Okay, I guess that's everything of significant. Ah, no. Three chain shots. Two light maces. Now that should be everything. Uh, okay, now we're just going to sell it. Deal. Alright, what is bulk selling? Hmm. 
Master to work on magical other. Dwarven war X. Yeah, we need to. We need to identify stuff, but how do I identify? Info doesn't I mean apparently there is a way to identify items, I just don't know how to yet. We're going, we're going to find out. Godspeed. You found a new recipe, spicy pastry. If, uh, to learn it, right click it in your inventory and choose the memorize option. Ah, okay. Um, so we need to learn it. Spicy pastry. Drop in. No. Copy recipe. Copy recipe is not memorize. Did he? Did we mem memorize it now? Didn't say memorize. It said write copy. Well, that's odd. That's more than odd. What about our dragon? How can we use the dragon? Known for their wisdom, majestic sovereign dragons rarely leave their homeland of Tiangziar. However, the little dragon seems to have quite a thirst for adventure. Can be used by this character. Yeah, but how do I use it? A ability. Oh, the heck. Oh, we have a lot of abilities. Hello there. Why did no one tell me? Oh, this game is very interesting. Acrobatics. Sovereign dragon. Yeah, but how do I... Or is it uh, because I'm inside of a building? Maybe it will appear outside? I have no idea. Peasant survivor. Let us press on. Eagle Watch Crusader. Okay, there are people. Crusader. More normal people. Let's loot everything that we have here. Fawn Autumn Haze. If tall, fragile looking elf sits in front of you, eyes closed. He's pale as ghost, his arm wrapped in a bloodstained bandage. You spot other bandages on his body under his clothes. But even in such a miserable state, he manages to keep calm. Raising his eyes to meet yours, he says faintly, I am Fawn Autumn Hayes, at your service. His pale lip are reddened by blood, but you see no signs of pain or fear in his grey eyes. By the way, um, since he's obviously bad, but if his lips are reddened by blood, even though they are pale, as long as your cheeks and lips and the flesh around your eyes are still red with red blood cells, you're good. The problem comes if you are seriously pale, which means that the red blood cell in your bloodstream has diminished. And then the shit's going to start at the bottom. Okay. Uh, do you need help? After giving you a cold, intense look, he shakes his head. Do not trouble yourself on my behalf. A local healer tended to me. Besides, I come from a resilient, hardy people. My body will endure both the wounds and the poison delivered through them. Who are you? My name is Fawn Autumn Hayes. I've come here from Kionin because I am a hunter and all minions of evil are my quarry. Kionin, the homeland of the elven race on Golarion. Kionin was almost completely evacuated by the elves just before the fall of the Starstone. They only recently, by elven standards, returned to Golarion to reclaim their ancient homeland, have become an isolationist realm, allowing few non-elven visitors into their mistrouded capital, the Yadara. We are strangers, and of different races and cultures. I'd rather not tell you more than is necessary. Who wounded you? A sinner and accomplice to demons. A quarry I am hunting in this inhospitable place. I am Morgrain. You can trust me. I might be able to help you. 
After a brief pause, Fawn says, It would be impolite to refuse such a direct and friendly offer. Who's your quarry here in Mende? I was hunting a fugitive, a deskerite by the name of Kailiesa. No, Kailiesa. It pains me to admit that there are heinous malefactors such as her among my noble kind. I managed to catch up to her in Genabres, and I wounded her. Then demons appeared, and the city was engulfed in flames. I was injured in the battle that ensued, and couldn't free her soul from its service to her dark masters. He expresses no anger or hatred as he speaks, only compassionate sorrow. I am sorry for your misfortune. I hope things will turn out differently next time. He purses his lips. There is no need for pity. Our ancient kind is blessed with great longevity. We gain a deeper understanding of the world than other races, and we learn our lessons better than anyone that's arrogant. That goes for learning from our mistakes as well. I survived, which means I will be more prepared when next we meet. I wish to aid you in your hunt. Fawn covers his eyes warily. I need one second to take a sip from my water bottle. to admit that was a very long tip sip i thank you oh but this is my mission and i'm used to facing all manners of terror on my own i do appreciate your willingness to help if you happen to me kailessa take caution she has turned many innocent souls to the path of evil and darkness has rewarded her with many gifts. Her appearance alone will tell you that it is warped. The agate skin, the malicious stare of her blood-red eyes, the best chill teeth. She's more monster than elf at this point. Knowledge, world 26. What does this Kailessa look like? Her skin is dark, her hair preternaturally white, her red eyes can see perfectly in the dark, which to my dismay I've come to know from experience. But bright light causes her kind pain. I used an alchemical <laughs> powder that explodes in a dazzling flash. And she cried out as if I had stabbed her. It appears that this woman is a drow. Her race is also known as Dark Elves, or Cavern Elves. They are rarely seen on the surface, so it is surprising to encounter her here. I'd like to know more about you. Tell me more about yourself. Other peoples tend to believe that identity is the sum of a person's actions and the events that happen to them. For them, I am one of a long line of warriors of Kionin, since his youth has dedicated himself to hunting evil and injustice. For them, I am a successful and capable huntsman who has tracked down and slain a great many monsters. But I am an elf, and for me, my identity has a different meaning. It is shaped by the place where I was born and that I love so deeply. 
I am shaped by what I find beautiful and what makes my heart quicken by the fears that come to me in the end, dead of night. And yes, hello, hello. By the things I find so intolerable that at the sight of them, my very core darkens and fills me with poison. Thus, to tell you who I am, I would require many days and much candor, which is more than you and I have at our disposal. Oh, jeez. Why did I start doing this voice? It's very <coughs> exhausting. Why did you choose to be a hunter of evil? Because I am the son of a noble and proud nation. We are sometimes criticized for our arrogance, but no one dares doubt our honor. When a crime is committed, we cannot turn a blind eye. If we were to abandon our obligation to oppose evil, if we were to surrender this obligation to other races, we would also relinquish our pre-eminence. <clears throat> yes, yes, I have no more questions. I think Kailessa might be a drow. You see a shadow pass over Fawn's eyes for a single instant. Then his face is just as impassive as before. A drow, unlikely. It's more plausible that her dark service has left a branding similar to the one that twisted the entire cursed drow race. A coincidence, I would think. I definitely have to go. Good fortune to you. Yes, yes. Uh, to the basement. Oh, we have a basement. Um, hello there. Ah, prisoner. We march ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't mean to protect us. Ha ha ha. Got you again. How many times is that today? Take your dogs and chop them. Tiefling. Oh, oh, easy there, chief. Don't hit me. Our path leads on. the game want so upside is not acceptable there are three levers here and if I down 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 nothing happens well I'm out of ideas hey chief hey dreamboat come over here I want to talk to you about something something really important how do I pronounce his name Voljuf He's Walchief. The young tiefling sits cross-legged on the floor. He looks relatively calm for someone in shackles, but his tail whips back and forth in agitation. Noticing your attention, the tiefling sits up and beckons you over. Quit bothering the decent people in here, Walchief, or I'll knock your teeth out! What's it to you, Delvin dum-dum? You were told to guard me, and I'm not stopping you. But no one told me I had to shut my trap. Who are you? Wolgif. Wolgif Jeffdo. Ideal in useful things. I can get you whatever you want. Anything. But there's just one problem. <laughs> the tiefling rattles his chains and gives you a meaningful look. Let me guess this is a new party member, a potential one. I mean, he is voiced, so it must be important. Oh, what do you want from me, tiefling? 
I'll lay it out for you. Simple job, 30 minutes tops. We go someplace, talk to someone, and in return, whatever you want, I'll get it for you. Some extra rations, no problem. Armor, weapons, scrolls, you name it. It's as good as yours. If you need my help with something, whistle and I'll be there. I'm handy enough with knives too, and even my magic know-how isn't too shabby. <laughs> what a load of guff. If you were good at magic, you wouldn't be stuck in here now, would you? Don't you listen to him, Chief. He'd find fault with the Queen herself. I'll be useful to have in battle, and I'll sell whatever you want at a reasonable price. It's your lucky day. You won't meet another gem like me in Canabras. Mm, why are you in chains exactly? Does it really matter? Don't get hung up on the past, Chief. Don't look to the future. Live in the here and now. He was caught thieving. Your shadow. What was that? <laughs> get me out of here and I'll tell you. And don't worry, it's not contagious. I can't help you while you're chained up. How can I free you? That's easy. You know Irabeth? Feisty looking gal, always wears armor. You can't miss her. She's the meanest fighter in the whole city. When you see her, put in a good word for me, will ya? Tell her there's this guy, Wolgif, locked up for no good reason in the Defender's heart. Well, for the follies of his youth. And he really wants to get out on bail so he can keep up his good behavior and make a contribution to society. You got that? Will you do it? He is sounds like an interesting character. So it's just, all right, I'll talk to you a bit about your situation. <laughs> I knew I could count on you! Knew it the moment I laid eyes on you. Godspeed. Irabeth rubs her red and tired eyes. Any success? How's the city? There is a tiefling chained up at the defender's heart. Can you tell me about him? Irabeth shrugs scornfully. Wolgif is a petty thief from a gang of tieflings operating in Canabris. That's what we call them in these parts. They tried to rob a vendor of magical items recently. Unfortunately, we apprehended only one of them, and the rest managed to escape. We have nowhere else to keep him apart from the Defender's heart, but that's hardly a prison. Uh, Wolgif knows it too. He's been begging us for days to let him go free or have someone vouch for him. He has already asked you to put in... I need to sneeze a second. He's already asked you to put in a good word for him, hasn't he? Irabeth squints at you thoughtfully, then shrugs. If you want to recruit Volgif and put him in good use, go ahead and take him off our guard's hands. We can ill afford to let a soldier spend their days watching over a middling thief. I hope the tiefling proves useful, should you decide to take him along. What is our main objective? You heard what the demon said. They're going to desecrate the Wardstone and blow up the whole barrier around the World Wound. That would be an even worse disaster than the World Wound's expansion before the Second Crusade. Not only Canabris, but every city with a Wardstone will be destroyed, including the capital. We cannot allow that, no matter what. We will retake it, even destroy it, if we must. The Omedes gift must not become a weapon of the abyss. No abyss. <laughs> These ward stones, what are they? They are our greatest treasure. The shield given to us by Yomide herself, and placed in Kenabris and other Mendavian cities and fortresses by her herald. The chain of ward stones forms a protective barrier that stops the expansion of the world wound and keeps the demons from moving beyond its borders. I shudder to think what will happen if that barrier fails. 
Tell me about the Eagle Watch. It was a small order created to fight not only demons but also the enemy within. To maintain the purity of the paladin ranks, prevent heresy and identify spies, and it failed miserably at that. The Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth infiltrated it and formed their nest within its ranks. Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth, pledging their lives to Baphomet, his cultists schemed to subvert the good works of the Crusaders. They caused trouble in Crusader camps, investigating fights and egging participants on to greater violence. They spread lies and sowed the seeds of fear with voices sweetened by magic. Now, some have even assumed the roles of holy crusaders and risen in the ranks of other knightly orders, waiting for the moment when their treachery can be used to achieve a most foul end. After the queen entrusted me with leading the order, an EVR and... Oh, I forgot to read the last part of it, I'm sorry. An EVR and I practically built it from scratch. We got rid of dead weight, people who weren't committed. We organized ways to transmit messages and orders safely. We introduced reliable ciphers. We found tacit allies around the city, from crusader orders to street beggars. This was my personal crusade, to purge this city of the Templars who had infested it. And I thought I was winning. I could feel it. We were so close to driving the cultists out of Kenavis, but... My Irabeth Ira frowns. It's hard to admit, but those successes didn't count for much once the demons entered the city. On the contrary, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be a headquarters at the Defender's Heart. The cultists would have served up the city on a platter to the demons. The lines on Irabeth's forehead softens. Yes, that's true. That's a good thing we achieved something. Thank you. Yeah, I need to. We organized... Wait, what? Oh, there was no... Um, for now, in a second, I wasn't sure. There was a portion of the text. Usually I'm always clicking on this um, mid-text, so no, 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 I'm just stupid. Allow me to ask a few personal questions. Frowning a little, Irabeth nods. Please. But I must warn you, there are some things I don't have the right to discuss. Where are you from? I was... <coughs> oh, I threw out too much talking. I was born in Canabres. I grew up on a farm just outside it, but my way back home lay at the end of a long and winding road. It took me years of traveling through foreign lands before I came to be where I've always belonged. How did you become a paladin? A bitter smile appears on the half-orc's face. I don't much like to remember it. Believe it or not, the story of how I became a paladin is also the story of how I failed to become a knight. My parents were crusaders, may their souls stand together in the Ormide Celestial Army. When I was born, they retired from the war and started preparing me to continue their legacy. But my father was an orc. You'd be pressed to find a calmer, wiser, and more pious servant of the goddess than he, but still, all his life he was dogged by sideways looks and whispers. When I grew older, and it was time for me to serve, I decided anywhere but Kenabres. That was where my father had served loyally, and his only reward had been injustice. Besides, the witch hunters, led by the honorable prelate Hulrun Shapak, stalked the city with a heavy hand. Mendevian witch hunts. During the First Crusade, holy warriors streamed into Mendev, where they encountered Sarkorians practicing their unique druidic faith. The 
crusaders mistook the wooden idols and rustic rituals for evidence of a demonic influence. Groups of witch hunters emerged from the disorganized chaos of the First Crusade. These witch hunters were often self-styled, their tactics little more than brutal trial and error. The least bit of evidence could mark a target for investigation. A clubfoot, thick accent, or even a suspicious absence of abnormalities. The witch hunter groups gained reputations for being cruel and arbitrary, although these weren't always deserved. Demons ranged freely across the world wound and often spilled into Mendev. Demonic possession did happen, though not nearly as often as the witch hunters claimed. Genuine witch hunters used divination magic and cautious investigation to draw out and destroy fiends, but they were rare compared with the zealous inquisitors who burned innocents at the stake. With the advent of the Fourth Crusade, the authorities took strong measures to end the bloody witch hunts of Mendev. Since then, the frequency of hunts has dropped considerably. Witch hunting is an interesting topic. In reality, back in the days when the Catholic Church decided let's witch hunt, um, usually in media, they only talk about women, witches, but in reality, the majority of people that were executed, crucified, burned, drowned, whatever, were men. And as this text suggests or explains, these methods were brutal trial and error. And just, for example, you were chained to a rock and then you were dumped in a lake. And if you drowned, there was the sign that you were innocent. And if you would have come up and survived, that would have meant you had demonic witch powers and then you would have been killed. <laughs> no matter the outcome, you always end up dead. If you drowned, like you, you should, that was a sign of innocence, but then you would have been already dead. So that wouldn't have done much for you. And if you miraculously made it to the top, I don't know, the chain broke or something, they would have interpreted it as a um, witch. Kill him. Her. So there was no justice in that. And many times they tortured someone until they made well the words they wanted <laughs> nowadays if you're not aware because of that it is forbidden at least in the civilized western world for police to torture people you see humans have a breaking point in any I'd say every human has a breaking point and if you torture a human long enough he will say whatever you want f in order for you to stop hurting him so the problem with torturing someone is not only is it immoral it can also lead to people making false confessions since they will say anything to stop the pain I mean, it's a very complicated question. There have been examples of police torturing child rapists or murderers where there were additional victims, maybe even alive, and they had no time to waste. And they decided to inflict pain upon the criminal, the monster, in order to make him give up the location of the potential victims in order to survive, save their lives. I mean, it's, it's a difficult more a problem. I mean, if the police has man it will would have managed to to gain the location of these children of these victims and save them from certain death, it kind of, would kind of justify the torture. But still, the question, of course, remains: Is that the way we want to build our society? And that's a very difficult question. <clears throat> anyway, who knows what they'd have done to a strange girl with green skin. Instead, I went to a smirk 
It looks more like a painful grimace across her face. You can laugh if you want, but I was young and foolish. I just laughed wall of all places. You can imagine how well I was accepted in a country that's been battling the orcs of Bergson since its foundation. Hold of Bergson. While orcs can be found throughout Gularion, nowhere else are they as plentiful or live in densely populated settlements as in the hold of Belkson. Belkson is an unforgiving wasteland, filled with shrub brush, steep mountains, and uneven badlands, where water is scarce and generally limited to the seasonal flood road. There were many like there were many there like me, but we were all treated as second class citizens to the locals my green skin was worse than leper scabs. Even my brothers in faith kept their distance. I took my vows, and the goddess granted me the powers of a paladin, but even then not a single order would accept me into their ranks. I spent another six months knocking on doors before I realized the simple truth. I serve the Hilme Day, not these people. I don't have to prostrate myself before them. So I left as a paladin, but not a knight. You must stick out like a sore thumb no matter where you go, right? I know many people envy Arsimors, but most of the ones I've known found their celestial heritage a burden. I find it hard to imagine what unasked un for adoration must be like. I'm sure it doesn't make life any easier or any more pleasant. Oh, we already had 42 minutes episode, oh, darn it. Uh, do I want to end this now? Nah. How did you come to join a knightly order? I left, I left last wall and went traveling. The goddess guided me and my path led me to where atrocities were happening. I often found fought in exchange for gold but never for unworthy aims, of course. I wandered the River Kingdoms for a few years, killing monsters and tracking down criminals. The River Kingdoms have long been a haven for inland pirates, anarchists, exiles, and anyone who cannot seem to make it in more civilized nations. The Kingdoms are by no means a unified nation, but rather a constantly shifting group of city-states and fiefdoms each at war with the others, both to gain more power and prevent their own demise. The River Kingdoms are located in the marshy lowlands of the Selen River Basin, where its three branches combine in their journey south to the Inner Sea. There are a few roads throughout the land, and the branching web of the Selen and its tributaries provide the primary means of transportation through and within the region. Sometimes I thought I was just wasting time, but my true place wasn't always. No, it has always been air. My, my English is just. I'm trying to correct mistakes on the fly, but it doesn't properly work. Uh, my true place was in Canabres, but I pushed those thoughts away. I didn't even want to think about going back, but in the end, divine providence had brought me to my senses. It, had, it happened in Timon, or Timon. I was tracking a gang of bandits, which my employer suspected was a cover for Resmiron's spies. Resmiron. The realm known as Resmiron was once just another turbulent, violent river kingdom, the Archduchy of Melkat. The leadership changed as often as the years or people there underwear. This ended in 4060. No, 4661? No, 4661? When the land was conquered by Resmir, a tyrant claiming to have ascended to godhood. What? I managed to find their lair, but inside I found something far more dangerous than spies. An old and holy temple to Zon Khon. When I broke in there, the cultists were about to sacrifice someone. A person who was destined to become my wife, a navy. That's another story. After I cut down the cultists, I examined their papers and couldn't believe my eyes. 
A network of evil cults had spread through all of Avistan, including Mendev. Worse, the documents clearly showed that their allies, the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth, had infested my native Kenabris, and were even among the ranks of the Paladins. After that, delaying my homecoming would be tantamount to desertion. Luckily, I was no longer alone. Anavia was as eager to destroy the cultists as I was. Anavia and I hurried to Kenabris. We couldn't trust anyone. The papers indicated that the cultists had infiltrated everything. Luckily, I had some experience in investigation. And my beloved, the half-orc smiles warmly. She knew her way around working locks, tailing people, and trading information with the city's bottom feeders. Soon, we defeated, alas, not the whole Hydra, but a few of its heads. Do you know who turned out to be the leader of the cultists? The commander of the Eagle Watch. Can you imagine? While Prelate Hulrun was chasing witches throughout the city, the enemy had infiltrated the very order responsible for inner security. The scandal reached the ears of the Queen. At first she planned to disband the order in disgrace, but then she offered its command to me and put its salvation in my hands. Of course, there was a small catch. I wasn't a knight, but I was made commander just the same, skipping the usual progression through ranks. Law, religion. I can't imagine the followers of Zon Kuton in alliance with demon worshippers. Shouldn't they hate each other? They should, but Baphomet's minions are masters of deception. They manipulate Kazon Kuthon's butch butchers as eagerly as Imurid Mede's knights. The cultists from that unholy temple didn't know the true face of their associates and Kinabris. We ourselves learned the truth much later, after getting to the bottom of their nest. How do the people of Kinabris feel about your background? They tolerated it surprisingly well. I shouldn't have been so wary. Crusaders don't tend to be prejudiced, as a rule. After all, heroes from all over the world, even from other continents, come here to fight the demons. Apparently, the people were only suspicious of full-blooded orcs. There were already many like me here, and we don't have any problems, though the locals do have their superstitions. Bendev is as merciless as last war, and they just have a different set of victims. I kept seeing those same sideways looks, and scowls, hearing the familiar whispers, but where once they used to whisper behind my back and point at me, now they whisper in my ear and point at someone else. It's so strange to be on the other side of humiliation, to wipe the spit from your face and suddenly be invited to change position and spit at someone else. You must have figured out by now that I'm talking about tieflings. It's true, there are many of them among the cultists and few among our crusaders, and our fighters do all they can to drive away those who would be our allies. People shun them, call them Arelu's spawn or worse. As if they chose to be born like that. I believe it's quite a feat to rise against the call of one's blood and join the forces of good. Still, Mostly only see them as enemies, most only see them as the enemy. I once saw a knight bleeding to death, because he wouldn't let a tiefling priest touch his wound. Alas, I haven't been able to change this in all my time in Kenabris. Tell me about Anemia. We met in Timon, Timon, as I was wandering aimlessly from one ordeal to another. We returned to Kinabris together to expose the Templars of the Ivory Labyrinth. The day the Queen knighted me, oh, sure, so she did knight her, was the second happiest day of my life. I mean, uh, sure, if she made her commander. The first day was the day of our wedding. But Anivia isn't just my beloved, she's my staunchest ally. We share every victory and defeat. Why is this map so high quality, detailed, textured? I just noticed, I mean, compare this, blurry textures, blurry tech. the book is high quality, the map is very high quality in terms of textures, everything else is blurry as heck, interesting. 
The windows are also quite high quality in terms of texture details. Uh, the best of me is alive thanks to her. Thanks for saving her back then. The day Cannabis fell before her return, the only thing giving me the strength to protect the defender's heart was the hope that I'd see her again. We are in your debt. Thank you for your answers. Yerabeth nods without saying a word. Go. May Yomide keep you safe. Yeah, that marks the end of our episode. 50 minutes, that's a bit much. Going to take a break and I'm going to sleep now. I like this game. I mean, the, the gameplay, the battles, it's not the best game in terms of cool fights, but then again, this is a D&D game. It's, it's meant to be played uh, with dices and checks and skill checks and rolls and it's taking time and I'm playing this real time so it's not as uh, some would say lame but if I do that people will flame me hard and it's not lame it's just different and I like it so far so until we meet again <laughs>